Hello, welcome to the Digital Prosperity Podcast, or should I say welcome back to the Digital Prosperity Podcast. Uh, we've been away, but we are back, bigger and better than ever before. Uh, I am as ever Will Williamson, and with me is David Roberts. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you all? Um, it's been an interesting time since we've been away. Turbulent, you might say. Very turbulent. Yeah, so the last time we recorded this podcast was a whole pandemic ago. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, a lot's happened in the world. And that is the theme of what we're going to talk about today, how, how this has changed marketing and changed small businesses. Yeah, well, I think it's important to say, because there be, would have been a lot of discussion about this, both in and out of businesses and experts' views, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, but we work with businesses every day. We've seen the transformation um, from, what, 17 years to now. And I think it's important that uh, our listeners get a perspective, um, a real insider's pers- perspective, um, about what is happening with digital marketing, how it's developed, how we see it going forward uh, for the foreseeable future for our small to medium-sized business owner. Yeah, so... At JDR, we work with hundreds of businesses across loads of different sectors and industries. And uh, so we've got a a good insight, really, into what's going on in lots of different small businesses. Absolutely. And I think it's worth saying some real trends. Sorry, I think it's worth saying as well that some of what we've been talking about, um, we've been talking about for a long time pre pandemic. Yeah, it's just sped things up. Absolutely. Mm. And um, so it's going to be interesting for our listeners to see what comes out, why, what they can implement, and how they need to look at their business going forward. Yeah. And hopefully we'll have a bit of fun along the way. Well, we'll see. We'll see about that. I'll try and rein you in as much as possible, but (laughs) (laughs) as we know, not always successful. No, no. (laughs) (laughs) So where should we start, do you think, Will? You see, what interests me is... The pandemic, if, if we go back, the, what actually happened between February and March happened quite quickly. Very quickly, yeah. Uh, and it felt like the floor was absolutely. falling in underneath. Absolutely. And all, it was almost by when they said you had to shut your business, mm. that was a shock, wasn't it? Absolutely. Really? And it came out of nowhere, although a week before it was a possibility. A week prior to that, it was nowhere near a possibility. Yeah, and the noise from, the, I mean, the, the, the government was so clearly trying not to do it that yeah. all the noise was, no, 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 we're going to carry on, we're going to carry on. Oh, we can't yeah. carry on, we've got to sh- <laughs> yeah. go home, everyone. Ah. So, yeah, it did really come uh, very quickly, the, the lockdown. And, um, yeah, it was a, a very deadening um, period on the economy for a, mm. a short period. But what was interesting was that within a month or so, uh, actually we saw some, I remember writing an article uh, about two months in um, about website traffic trends across all of our different clients. It's shown that actually the majority of businesses we work with, actually their website traffic grew during the lockdown. Yeah, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to add a caveat. Mm -hmm. All the websites that were fit for purpose. Yes, there were definitely... Winners uh, and losers in all yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, grew. Yeah. Because I think there's a big confusion about, for a lot of business owners and listening to this right now, as to what is a website fit for purpose. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a lack of um, real knowledge about it's, it's not as simple as putting something on the search engines and people will find you. Yeah. So if you were one of those business owners that just put a website up and didn't look at what it would take for that website to be successful, I think you would have been a loser. Mm -hmm. If you're a business owner that actually looked at what it takes to have a successful website and actually invested in that, then you could have been a winner. Um, But when, when I say investment, it doesn't have to be necessarily be a major investment neither. Just investing in that website, Mm. being fit for purpose. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I also think industry played a factor. So um, I think if you were in events or are in events. Or B2C. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Anything in hospitality, 
leisure, etc., then um, you know you could have a fantastic website, but it's still you're not going to get anything uh, uh, during lockdown um, unless you innovated, which we'll come to. Yeah, I mean we we've got we uh, we've got clients that, for example, one of our clients is a training business, and uh, all classroom based training, health and safety, construction, that type of thing. And they moved really quickly to online training. And uh, after fearing that they might go out of business uh, because they're suddenly their business model was completely shut down overnight, um, they're now doing better than before, have got capacity to grow faster than ever before, having moved, pivoted really quickly to uh, an online training model. Yeah, that's the thing about digital, though. Digital gives you a platform to trade um, in, with innovation and keep your business moving forward all the time. There's so many elements that the technology can bring to your business. You don't have to rely on the traditional handshake networking, mm. sitting in front of your client or prospect anymore. There's a vast array of things you can do from a digital platform. So when I was talking about website earlier, I, was, I didn't mean just the website. I mean, are you looking at your company's digital footprint, which the website is an integral part of? Yeah. Yeah. There's been some great innovations we've seen over the last um, 14 months or so with businesses, both with our clients and with just um, looking outside of that. Um, I've seen some great innovations. Um, uh, gyms doing online training, mm -hmm. doing online nutrition. Yep. Yeah. Um, restaurants that didn't have a dine out service. Yep. Not doing converting delivery. to dine out services. Mm -hmm. You know, just a, an array of um, business owners looking at taking a, a very bad situation and trying to turn it round. To their advantage and every time that happened digital was a part of it car company mm. click and collect who would have thought the click and collect a brand new car and uh, no matter whether it's from ferrari whether it's from bmw whether it's from kia you've got a click and collect service for your car you weren't buying cars in the pandemic, but you don't. Just, just, a, just a student of uh, business innovation. Okay, good. Keep good. it low, Will. Don't Keep want to give our listeners the no, wrong impression. No, 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 uh, no, no. Don't think, no. I don't want them thinking I'm standing at the Ferrari garage, <laughs> click and collect. Okay, well, let's just, let's just, go, let's just, just squash that go, straight away. Put a couple of those in the basket. <laughs> and there's a few people crying now. Go, oh, Dave, boy, you got a Ferrari. <laughs> So um, the, the the big change, obviously, anything to do with face to face contact has has gone. So any businesses which had face to face sales had to adapt to mm. virtual yeah. uh, selling and marketing. Absolutely, I hope everyone that had the advantage to do that did do that as well. Yeah. So obviously, huge rise in Zoom Zoom meetings, Microsoft Who Teams. Who would have heard of Zoom before the lockdown? Hey. Eh? Most yep. people, do you Zoom? They would have thought that you were going on a holiday. I, tell, I, knew, I knew when Zoom was getting really big was when um, uh, my father-in-law told me the vicar was using it to give us service <laughs> in the local community. I thought he was Zooming to the heavens. That's where. <laughs> what are you going to tell me? He was talking to the archangel Zooming. Oh, maybe. <laughs> I'm not privy to those conversations, but maybe. Uh, <laughs> no, great point though, Will. Great point. How brilliant yeah. is that though? Yeah, so what that's done, um, so we, uh, I know of a lot, number of businesses that traditionally have always operated face-to-face -face with their clients, like accountants, uh, financial advisors, et cetera, where they would, they would typically go and meet people in person. They've not been able to do that for a year, so they've done it via Zoom. And that has actually meant that they've not restricted to their local area any no. longer. They could start picking up clients all over the country or all over the world mm. even. Mm. Um, it, and of course, well, that's the innovation that we've been talking about for a long time, that digital gives you the ability to leverage yourself within your business and, and create more time for mm. yourself. 
and now that this um, as this podcast is being uh, we're doing this podcast now there is light at the end of the tunnel and I want this podcast to represent a future that all small to medium-sized business owners will grasp you know the days when you have to toil seven days a week um, worried about x worried about y i'm not saying they're gone but they can be absolutely leveraged massively if you adopt digital marketing in the way that can give you back not only expediency in your company not only great customer service not only fantastic sales opportunities but give the business owner back some yeah yeah so we, you, you can do more with automation now you can do more with uh, use of video and um yeah you can do more with kind of remote selling technology like zoom and teams and and so on and you know we've we've seen in the last 12 months especially a big shift uh, of business owners recognizing how important their websites have become whereas as we say we've been banging that drum for some time is that it's you know it's probably the most important part of most businesses marketing um but in the last 12 months that is really it's you know for some businesses it's been the only part of their marketing that they can use in a world where you are not able to go out face to face to people absolutely i think it'd be good will if we spend a bit of time on that because um we know um, not for everyone listening, but we know for a lot of small to medium-sized business owners. And remember, when we're talking about small to medium-sized business owners, they could be turning eight, nine, ten million pounds. You know, we're not necessarily talking about one man and a van, as it were. Um, why the reluctance? Yes, to understand that yes, you get your business from word of mouth. Mm-hmm. But why the reluctance to invest in marketing? And what, why is marketing confused so much with sales? Because mm-hmm. they're two different disciplines. Yep. I think, yeah, I mean, we could spend a whole episode on that, couldn't we? The, um, um, I don't know, but um, uh, people have seen, I don't know if it's a business advisors, or uh, consultants um, or marketing gurus that go around talking about how marketing should give you a return on investment. And somewhere along the line, for a lot of people, that's translated to, if you spend £100 on marketing, you should instantly get back £200. Whereas the reality is that doesn't often happen. You, you get a return on investment from marketing by doing it consistently uh, and effectively over a period of time and you get an accumulation of benefits that gives you the return on investment but it's quite rare that something gives you an instant that that makes you money from day one there are those types of strategies but it's you know a lot of a lot of business owners that's their bar and then every time they invest in marketing it doesn't do that they think marketing doesn't work so they stop yeah and going forward um, this is a time for business owners to understand, in my view, that it's a must to invest now mm. in marketing, especially digital marketing, um, because we're moving into a world that won't be familiar with the old world. There, there'll be a strong um, trail of this pandemic and the fear of it going uh, as we move forward and going yeah. into the future. So in other words, we're not just going to go back to no. the world in 2019. No, we're not. Um, and let's say we, let's say that, the, that we did even, would you want to build your business in the model that you used prior to the pandemic mm. when you've seen now how easily that can be taken away from you is something like this because it doesn't have to be another pandemic could be another crisis that we're not aware of so what if another crisis was to rear its head Mm. is your business able to adapt quickly having 
learned the lessons from today so yeah. that tomorrow you're not affected because for me that's what this podcast and anyone listening to it um, is about it's about taking the time to realize the importance of having a business that can pivot according to what it needs the small to medium sized business owner has an opportunity compared to huge businesses because a huge business is like a great big oil tanker. Mm, absolutely. So if that needs to change direction, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a bit of an effort getting the oil tanker to change. Whereas your small to medium sized business should be more like a yacht, mm. yeah, that is just moving along. And as the bad weather comes, can adjust very quickly to what, which direction to go in, unlike the oil tanker. So come on, small to medium-sized business owners, understand that this is the opportunity to not just be slow, mm. but be nimble, quick, adapt, and use digital marketing, because that's what this is about, to its best advantages. For you, your business, and and the employees within it. Yeah. So, to sum sum up what we're saying, because um, I totally agree. Uh, the the advantage you've got with a small business is that you can adapt quickly and you can change and you can pivot. And so now is the time if you haven't done already to move your marketing and sales into the digital world to embrace technology, automation, um, uh, remote tools, video, et cetera, um, to, to shift your marketing into the digital world, into the website. This is, this is going to be what the next five, 10 years is gonna look like, isn't it? Um, and the businesses that, that don't do that, that keep, that if you are at heart trying just to get back to what you were doing before, then you're on a, you know, you're not on a successful path there, most likely. No, it's a, it's built in sand, isn't it? The foundation. Yeah. So let's give our listeners a helping hand. Where would we advise them to start? So if you want to know more about how to adapt and modernize your sales and marketing, uh, I can I recommend the JDR Group website. Well, that's a good that, place to start. That sounds like um, a very good suggestion. So uh, you'll Why see didn't I think of that? Uh, various uh, videos, guides, etc., that explain um, the, the strategies, systems, and technologies you can use to bring your business marketing up to uh, the 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 post pandemic. Are we in? A, we're not in a post pandemic world yet, but I think the, everyone knows what you mean. You, yes, exactly. Um, uh, the the new world that we're in now um, as a result of COVID. I would to start there. Yeah, I, that's a, that that's where I would start, and uh, hope uh, our listeners don't mind a bit of self promotion. However, the uh, our site has got lots of free tools mm -hmm. that they can just um, utilize and never have to speak to a JDR person. So feel free to uh, to use that uh, free resource. Subscribe to the podcast. Absolutely. If you haven't subscribed already. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because it's going to get even, as Will said at the beginning, even fitter and stronger. Yes. And the first place, once you've done that, um, what also, Will, is you need to look at the, the strength and weaknesses of your business from a sales and marketing perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you need to do a real proper SWOT analysis, yeah, on your current clients. How have you won them? Yeah? How long have they been clients? What makes them good clients? Yeah? What are the products that you typically, um, a good client will, um, you would service them with or you, they would buy from you? Why do they buy it from you? Yeah, who's involved in that process? Can that process be streamlined? 
where's your new leads coming from? Yeah? And you can look at that from a point of view as, well, where's the existing leads come from? Yeah? Are they good quality leads? Are they leads that make you profitable? Just, just sitting down and analysing what worked, yes, now or prior pandemic, and how much of that is going to work going forward, um, which requires a bit of time. I'm just touching on it, but as I've said, we've got the free resources. We'll go into that deeper. But it's such an important thing to do, once again, working on your business rather than working in your business. And <clears throat> without even doing that, a lot of our listeners will know where the challenges are anyway. They will know that. But the challenge is, do they know how to fix it? Mm -hmm. And are they aware how digital can help them fix it? So I would strongly recommend that they do a SWOT analysis of what's successful, what's working, and what's not working in business, and find a way of solving those challenges. And the things that are working, find a way to make them work even more effectively. And HubSpot can help yeah. them with that, can't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, the... Um... I can only endorse that the, the the SWOT analysis that we did back in April and May, uh, following the the lockdown, um, made a huge difference. It was it was so it's a it's a really valuable process to to go through, um, and yeah, HubSpot's a, a a great tool to look at uh, to help uh, on that journey of modernising your sales, marketing, and moving into the digital age. If so there again, was one thing, Will the HubSpot. Um, firstly, I think you should explain HubSpot to anyone that's not familiar with it. But if there's one thing HubSpot could bring to our listeners, what would you say it is? Um, I, I think HubSpot switches the lights on in your business. It, it helps you understand what's actually going on. Um, it, it helps you see what's working and what isn't from a marketing perspective because most businesses invest in marketing with no real idea what it's delivering for them um and no idea you know how many leads what happened to the leads how much revenue did they generate from the leads uh, so hubspot tracks and measures all of that it tracks and measures the entire sales process it keeps a, a track record of communications with with customers it helps report on every element of your marketing and your sales and also your customer service. So, yeah, as, a, as a, an MD, as a business owner, it helps you know what's going on. And that means that you make better decisions. So <clears throat> going forward, Will, coming out of this pandemic, Hussbar and a tool like Hussbar is a major addition to business, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's very hard to firstly have that information in different places that you're trying to pull together, yes? To have it in one spot is absolutely fantastic for you mm -hmm. um, uh, as a business owner. And you can read that information and make quick decisions off the back of it. Yep. But not only that, it's going to help you build your digital footprint to attract more customers into your business, yeah? And monetize them through automation. Again, the only, the only thing that's worth saying is that uh, HubSpot is a tool, and like any other tool in, in business or in life, it's only as good as how it's used. So um, that's one of the reasons we existed as an agency, as a, as a HubSpot partner. We know how to actually use it for a business, yeah. uh, to, to help clients use it. But that's the, that's, that's the benefit to our listeners, well. I'll tell you for why. Because as a small to medium-sized business, when I was growing up, one of the challenges was, and early in business, and um, working for a small to medium-sized business owner, was that to compete with a big competitor was difficult. If they had um, bigger budgets, more resources, yeah, um, they were always going to have more market share than you. Um, the information they'd have, um, some of them used to pay for. Do you remember the old market research firms mm -hmm. that used to be still out going? There? Yeah, 
they used to they go out there you you employ a market research company and they would tell you everything you want to know or you need to know in order to push your product out there and a lot of smes could not compete with that what hubspot does is gives you the opportunity yes to compete with any business of any size because you've got the dashboard in front of you mm. and that's the opportunity going forward you have the opportunity to receive the data to make quick decisions so again to find out more about hubspot our website is a good place to start um and tomorrow learn more about any of the topics we've covered in today's show go to jdrgroup.co.uk uh, otherwise good to be back good to be back well good to be back um and uh, I, I look forward to our next episode so thanks for joining us and we'll be back hopefully sooner than a, a year and a half yeah, <laughs> next yeah, time yeah, round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't miss me too much. <laughs> thanks everyone. Bye See bye. you soon.